We start with breaking news. The Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis files for bankruptcy. Hi again, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lisa Bedeau. The Twin Cities Archdiocese is the 12th diocese now in the U.S. to file for bankruptcy due to sex abuse claims. It is seeking bankruptcy protection in order to gather resources to help victims of alleged sexual abuse at the hands of its clergy members. Jeff Anderson, the St. Paul attorney handling most of the clergy sex abuse cases, said in a news conference this morning that the action taken today was necessary. Devoted and dedicated to protecting the survivors and making sure that they're honored in this process and treated fairly. About two dozen lawsuits have been filed against the church and it has also received more than 100 notices of potential claims. Archbishop will be making a short announcement at 2 p.m. regarding the financial future of the church. The race for Fargo mayor will officially grow to two on Monday. Dr. Tim Mahoney will formally announce he's running for the mayor's job, though he's already said he was going to. Mahoney has a news conference set for Monday just after noon at the library in South Fargo. Mahoney is serving as mayor after the death of Dennis Wallacher last month. He'll have to resign to run for the post. That's in the city charter, but he can resign after the election if he wishes. Fargo businessman, former city commissioner, and candidate for mayor Brad Wimmer is also running for the job. It's a cloudy day out there, but once again, not too bad temperature-wise. Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn to see what we can expect as a... Well, we move into the weekend. Yeah, not too bad temperature-wise in most locations. However, in northern uh, Minnesota, you may have an argument there. Six degrees right now, but at nine in Arozo, 12 feet for Falls and Bemidji. It's 24 here in Fargo, 27 down in Sisseton. Quite a range of temperatures across the region, and uh, we do have some locally dense fog over towards the uh, Jamestown area. Wind chill in Jamestown right now, 7 degrees and 4 degrees in Grand Forks. Minus 6 your wind chill in both Roseau and Vaudette. We've got a wind chill of 13 here in Fargo. On the radar, not showing a whole lot, but there is a little bit of flurry activity, a little bit of uh, light freezing drizzle making its way across the area, particularly over in our western counties where we've got the uh, locally dense fog. And we'll have a better chance for more freezing precipitation as we head through the overnight hours tonight and into the day Saturday. Tomorrow going to be a windy day as well. Could see some uh, significant impacts to travel beginning tonight and on into tomorrow. And we'll have more on that part of the forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. One person is dead after an officer involved shooting in the Twin Cities overnight. It's the second one in three days. Bloomington police got a call just after 11 last night about a suicidal man. They encountered an armed man outside a house. Then the scene moved to another neighborhood where shots were fired. The suspect was pronounced dead at the scene. No officers were hurt. It's Friday, and that means it's time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say David Raymond is wanted for DUI and failure to appear. Take a look at your TV screen. That's his picture. If you know where he is, please call police. A massive effort was needed to rescue a man trapped in a grain bin in Kinsel, North Dakota. NewsDakota.com is reporting the call came in around 1230 yesterday afternoon of a man trapped in a bin of soybeans at a grain elever elevator in Kinsel. Emergency responders from around the area used special equipment to extract the man. He was taken to the Carrington Health Center. We don't have any information yet on his identity or his condition. Moms and dads and a lot of other people will be talking about a conceal and carry discussion going on in the North Dakota legislature right now. Lawmakers are looking at a bill that would allow a person with a conceal and carry permit to have a firearm inside a school. The bill was proposed with the focus on rural schools where a slower response time poses an issue. But the idea of having a gun in a teacher's hand is too much responsibility for some parents to think about. It would muddle the, muddy the waters a little bit, and I, I, don't, I don't like the idea of teachers and principals having that authority to, to take someone's life or to injure somebody. The bill, as proposed, leaves the final decision up to individual schools. The House Committee will look at it Tuesday before making a recommendation. A similar bill made it through the House two years ago, but failed in the Senate. Friends and family will gather today to say their goodbyes to a second victim of this month's deadly school bus train crash near Laramore, North Dakota. The funeral for 17-year-old Cassidy Sandstrom of Amarado is this afternoon at 1.30. It will be held in the Laramore High School gym. Visitation is one hour before the service. Cassidy was a senior at Laramore High School. 
New Fargo floodplain maps go into effect today, and that means you could soon be paying for flood insurance. The new FEMA maps will be used to determine who has to pay for flood insurance coverage. Mortgage companies may now require homeowners to pay up, even if your property line only borders the flood zone. Homeowners pay $400 a year for two years. And then after those two years is up, it'll start increasing around 18 to 30 percent each year until you reach that new premium, premium amount. That premium amount could reach $4,000. You should call your insurance agent to find out just how these, uh, how these maps may affect you. Remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook to follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed all day.